The inner ear houses the structures for the balance system, the vestibular system, and the hearing system, the cochlea. The entry to the cochlea is termed the vestibule. Both structures are housed in a member's labyrinth. The bony labyrinth is embedded within the temporal bone, which is the densest bone of your body. The lining secretes perilynth, which is the fluid found in the superficial cavities of the labyrinth. So you see the vestibular system is on the left and the cochlea is on the right, but they share fluid. The oval window is within the lateral wall of the vestibule, anterior to the semicircular canals and posterior to the cochlea. That connects the middle ear to the inner ear. The osseous semicircular canals has the sense organs for movement of the body. There are three semicircular canals and the interaction of these three canals and the fluid within them helps the brain code three-dimensional space. The cochlear labyrinth has an appearance of a coiled snail shell. It coils from the base near the vestibule, wrapping around itself two and five-eighth times where it reaches the apex or the top. The core is the modiolus, which is a finely perforated bone. Fibers of the eighth vestibule cochlear nerve pass through these perforations en route to the ganglion cells within the modiolus. The core of the modiolus is continuous with the internal auditory meatus of the temporal bone through which the vestibule cochlear nerve passes. The labyrinth is divided into two incomplete chambers, the scala vestibuli and the scala tympani, by an incomplete shelf, bony shelf protruding from the modiolus, known as the osseous spiral lamina. This forms the point of attachment to the scala media, which houses the sensory organs for hearing. The spiral lamina becomes progressively smaller as it coils up to the apex or the top of the cochlea. At the apex, the two chambers meet in a hook-like fashion and it call, it's called the heliocotribo. And it's through there that the fluids communicate with the skeleton pani and the scala vestibuli, how they communicate with themselves. The round window provides communication between the skeleton pani and the middle ear. The oval window is where the stapes is placed, and it permits communication between the scale of the stibuli and the middle ear space. Perilymph is the fluid that fills the scale of the stibuli and the scale of tympani. The membranous labyrinth parallels the bony labyrinth, and the vestibuli, or the entryway to the inner ear, is the space shared by the sensory organs of hearing the cochlea and balance the semicircular canals. The vestibular system is a membranous labyrinth and is also filled with fluid. It has endolymph in it. The ampulla is exit region from the semicircular canals near one of the openings in the vestibular system. So again you see the cochlea on the left and the vestibular system on the right, the three semicircular canals and the ampulla is that bulge. It's very tiny structure again has just behind your ear. The membranous labyrinth of the cochlea, the cochlear duct, resides between the scala vestibuli and the scala tympani, and that makes up the scala media, which houses the sensory apparatuses. The basilar membrane forms the floor of the scala media and it separates the scala media from the scala tympani, and that's where the organ of corti sits. The organ of corti is four rows of hair cells resting on a bed of Dieter's cells for support. There are three rows of outer hair cells and a single row of inner hair cells in the by the tunnel of corti. The tectorial membrane overlays these hair cells. The outer hair cells are embedded in this membrane and the inner hair cells do not make contact with the tectoral membrane. 
So we have the scale of vestibuli on top, and the scale of vestibuli on bottom. They share the same fluid. In the middle is the scale of media that has a different fluid. There are three rows of outer hair cells, one row of inner hair cells. They are overlaid by the tectorial membrane. The tips of the outer hair cells are embedded with the tectorial membrane. They all sit on the basilar membrane. The inner hair cells receive afferent innervation, which sends messages up to the brain. And the outer hair cells have efferent nerve innervations, which send inhibitory messages back down. There are 3,500 inner hair cells that form a single row stretching from the base or the beginning of the cochlea up to the apex. The upper surface of each hair cell is graced with a series of approximately 50 cilia. Those are the tips. There are three rows of outer hair cells, approximately 12,000 outer hair cells, and the stereocilia protrude also from the top surfaces of the outer hair cells. Again, here's another picture up close. You have the outer hair cells, the three rows, one row of inner hair cells resting on the basilar membrane overlaid by the tectorial membrane. Here's a picture of healthy outer hair cells on the right and the inner hair cells at the top. Again, inner hair cells receive afferent innervation. All of this occurs on the size of a dime. This cochlea is just the very small size of a dime. And like I said, afferent innervation to the inner hair cells, efferent innervation to the outer hair cells.